Much of the food we eat depends on honeybees, which pollinate fruit, nut, and vegetable crops, as well as numerous ecologically important plants. In addition, of course, honeybees produce honey, which we also enjoy. A honeybee colony is a superorganism that is comprised of approximately 35,000 sterile female workers, hundreds of male bees called drones, and a single reproductive female called the queen bee. The sterile female workers are responsible for colony defense, caring for young bees, and foraging for nectar and pollen, the food sources for the colony. The male bees live in the colony during the spring and summer months with the sole purpose of mating with a queen bee from another colony. As for the queen bee, she isn't the ruler of the colony like her name suggests. Her job in the colony is laying around 1,000 eggs per day during the spring and summer months. Worker bees live between a few weeks to a few months, depending on what time of year they emerged, whereas queen bees may live up to a few years. Recently, beekeepers in many parts of the world have experienced high annual honeybee colony losses. In the U.S., beekeepers have made up for average colony losses of 33% annually since 2006 by splitting surviving colonies to make smaller colonies. Unsustainable honeybee colony mortality could result in lower food crop production and or higher food costs. Many factors contribute to honeybee colony losses, including exposure to insecticides, lack of bee-friendly flowers that provide a sufficient amount of nectar and pollen for proper bee nutrition, and pathogens. While each of these factors contribute to colony losses, scientists are still working out the relative importance and effects of each one. At Montana State University, members of the Flenican Lab are investigating how pathogens impact honeybee health at the cellular, individual, and colony levels. They work closely with expert commercial beekeepers to obtain samples throughout the year from colonies in varying states of health. Bees can be infected by many types of pathogens, including bacteria, fungi, and viruses. In addition, bee colonies are often infested by varroa destructor mites, which feed on bees, particularly developing larvae, and transmit viruses while they're feeding, similar to how mosquitoes and ticks transmit viruses to people when they bite. These mites are the number one enemy of bee colonies in the U.S. Beekeepers have to be vigilant about tracking mite levels in their colonies and administering anti-mite treatments. Whereas mites are easy to see with your eyes, most pathogens require a microscope or molecular diagnostic tests to identify. There are two types of bacteria that cause disease in honeybees, Panabacillus larvae and Melissococcus plutonius. These bacteria cause American and European fowl brood diseases, which infect bee larvae and kill them, causing them to decompose and smell foul. Microsporidia are a group of spore-forming unicellular parasites that are a sister group to fungi. There are two species of Microsporidia that infect honeybee colonies throughout the world, Nosema apis and Nosema serrana. Both of these pathogens are very prevalent in U.S. honeybee colonies. Trypanosomatids are eukaryotic parasites that have a single flagellum. Two types of these parasites are known to infect honeybees, Crithidia mellificae and Lotmaria passim. They live in the bee digestive tract and likely reduce the amount of nutrients available to the honeybees. Viruses are the largest group of honeybee pathogens. Viruses have different classifications based on the composition of their genomes. The majority of viruses that infect honeybees have single-stranded RNA genomes. But some have double-stranded DNA, like genetic blueprints or genomes of humans and honeybees. These genomes are transcribed into messenger RNAs, which are translated into proteins, otherwise known as the molecules responsible for carrying out the processes of life. Viruses are easily transmitted between members of the colony, for example, by mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding or contact. 
Viruses can also be transmitted via floral resources. So, if an uninfected bee gathers pollen from a plant from which an infected bee previously gathered pollen, viruses can be brought back into the colony. Another mode of virus transmission is called transovarian, or vertical transmission, where an infected queen will transmit the virus via her eggs to the developing embryos. Bee viruses have also been detected in bee semen and thus are likely sexually transmitted as well. Out of all the millions of viruses that infect hosts ranging from bacteria to vertebrates, only approximately 30 that infect bees have been discovered and described. There are likely many more that we don't know about. Here are some of the common bee infecting viruses. The deformed wing virus, which can be transmitted by the Varroa destructor mite. Deformed wing virus infections, like many bee viruses, can range from asymptomatic, meaning they don't show obvious symptoms, to causing symptoms, including bees that emerge with deformed wings due to infection during development. Black queen cell virus, which was named due to it causing a blackened queen cell, the space where the queen bee develops, and eventually killing the developing queen bee larva. Many bees, including worker bees, can be infected with black queen cell virus without showing any symptoms. Chronic bee paralysis virus creates a greasy, shiny appearance in the bees and can result in paralysis. If a bee becomes paralyzed, it will die. Lake Sinai viruses are a large group of viruses, which, based on their genome sequences, are most similar to the chronic bee paralysis virus. It's not yet known if the Lake Sinai viruses produce any symptoms, but it's thought that individual bees can be infected with billions of viruses that likely drain the bees of valuable energy. Pathogens can prove deadly, not just in individual bees, but the colony as a whole. A bee colony must maintain a critical number of bees to stay alive. Thousands of bees are required to keep the developing bees warm, care for the queen, forage for food, and guard the colony. If too many individual bees die from virus infection, the colony will also die. A major focus of research in the Flanagan Laboratory at Montana State University is investigating the role of viruses on honeybee health at both the colony and individual levels. We will discuss methods used to research viruses and other bee pathogens in the next video of this three-part series.